Hello and welcome to Bosch Professional Live UK. It's Wednesday, it's 4pm and I'm Chris Murray. And I'm Danny Parks. So, Danny, hope you had a good Christmas, New Year yes, and all that not stuff. Too bad. Not I hope bad. you guys out there in the chat also had a really good Christmas period. I've definitely had made it, it's been very difficult for me to come back to work, I'll be honest. <laughs> yes, I had a good couple of weeks. It's been a bit of a struggle. Off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I hope you survived the cold weather. I hope you got full of food and, all, and the booze and all that stuff. So, Danny. What are we going to be doing today? Right, today we're going to cover off um, our most recent range of tools for 2023. So our first third of the year worth of power tools we're introducing to the market. So we thought we'd run through these with you. Yeah. So if you've missed it, because we're about four days into the new year, there's been a quite a few number of new products that have just snuck in mm. and been launched while we've all been having our holiday break. So don't forget, it's a live stream, so remember to pop your questions in the chat. Um, it's not just Danny and I today. We've also got our UK product manager, Lawrence, coming to join us as well. So feel free to pop questions to him as well. We want to look at questions about the products that we have got coming out here in T T1. But mm. also, if there's any other products or any other questions you want to put to us for the year, feel free to pop some questions in there and we'll also see whether or not we can answer them if we're able to. So let's, uh, let's get started. What should we start off with first? Right, we're gonna, well, we've got a, a range of products coming out this, uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, we thought we'd start off with an accessory, which is a bit of a strange place to start. Yeah, actually, I've got something over here to, to start it off with because this isn't the product. Nope. This isn't the new one. We've had one of these in the range for many years. This is part of our FlexiClick system and this it's a small STS hammer attachment. So we've had it for our 18 volt FlexiClick system, yep. but you've got something new. Yep, I shall grab uh, one of the machines here. So we've got the 12 volt, um, yeah, so the GSR um, 12V-35FC. Sorry, I'll find the spot. <laughs> there you go. So that's a 12 volt version of the FlexiClick machine that we've just been talking about there. But before, we've always been missing um, an SDS Plus attachment for this, whereas you normally get the, uh, the chuck, the 30, um, 10 mil chuck on it, uh, with the 90 degree, mm -hmm. and also the offset attachment. Now, we're bringing to market long-awaited SDS Plus attachment for this machine as well. So some people may think um, small machine, 12 volt machine, is not going to pack much in the way of a punch when it comes to an SDS Plus machine. But you'd be wrong. Mm. Actually, this is this kicks out 0.9 joules of, of impact energy, so plenty for do uh, for doing uh, lintels, um, anything up to 60 mil in fact. So um, quite a, a good size diameter hole for such a small machine. Um, yep. It's perfect for um, if you're if you're say for instance climbing up a block of flats for instance, and you've got a, um, a whole bag of mach the machines to carry. Pop this in there if you're just doing up to 16 mil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, as you said, we've got the the, <clears throat> the 18 volt STS attachment, and a lot of people had great things to say about that. Mm. <clears throat> but as we said, the 12 volt plat 12 volt platform is so light and compact, it makes a lot of sense to to add this attachment and this functionality to it. Even though you're running on the 12 volt system, you're not losing that much power between the bigger 18 volt system. Just because you said it's 0 0.9 joules, that's that's yeah. plenty. I think. If I'm correct, the 18 volt model is, uh, is uh, delivering about one joule of energy. So since we've created this, or since we developed this, the innovations mm. that's gone into the new version of it is yeah. incredible. So this with a six amp power um, double stack 12 volt battery is considerable runtime out of there as that as well. So um, really quite a good little machine there. Yeah, a great attachment. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, I mean, uh, we have teased the FlexiClick system a few times in the live streams in the past. I think we talked about it in, I think, our combi range, drill drivers and combis, mm -hmm. because technically the FlexiClick is a drill driver with just different attachments. Yep. Um, the fact that now we've got uh, an entire range of both 12 volt and 18 volt FlexiClick tools mm -hmm. and all the different accessories means you've got loads of flexibility. Uh, we might, I think we were saying we we're going to do a, a live stream just talking about the FlexiClick system because mm. we have a new FlexiClick tool in the 18 volt range coming out. Can't tell you too much, we've, te we've teased it in the past. I think once that machine's live, we could talk about all the different FlexiVolt products and yeah. all the accessories in the range. The other advantage with this is, whereas normally with one of these machines, uh, if it was a GSB, for instance, or the, uh, the hammer drill version of this, you're talking about a percussion hammer, whereas this is actually using the hydraulic hammer as well. So it's, you've got that, new, sorry, not hydraulic, pneumatic hammer. Uh, so you've got the same mechanism as you have in our, uh, our two kilo, three kilo, four kilo impact, um, Bosch impact drills. Yeah. Um, now, all built into the 12 volt system, so really um, 
filled a lot, filled a filled a gap there that's really been required for some time. Well, as an example, here's a good accessory as well, which is our 7x bit. This is a 10 mil. So yep. this machine will do up to 10 mil in concrete, but it was up to 16 in uh, brick and masonry, I believe. That's it. So yep. that's a good accessory to have in there. Being the the 7x bit, that also means you've got a full carbide head, which means you know if you've got if you only had one accessory, mm. 7x 7x SDS accessory SDS bit in yep. this tool, perfect because then you'll be you know, you're really, really getting the optimum amount of performance out of the tool and the accessory. Yeah, we've, we've tested this quite extensively because we've had this item for quite some time now um, as a marketing sample. So we've, we've given it a good going over. Um, the only thing to remember when using this is make sure you're in drill setting because if obviously if you're in the torque yeah. setting, it doesn't work at all. You so. want that in high speed, so speed two, yeah. and you want it in uh, full, full torque drill mode. Yeah? So you're getting the maximum amount of impacts per minute. You want it in forward as well. Yeah, I'll for, yeah forward, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the example you, you brought up of what we've been doing with it, it's curb stones. Yes. In 10 mil in curb, and like, when it comes to concrete, you're not really going to get much harder than that. That's, That's quite a, a high newton metre con concrete, that. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, we're more than confident that this accessory or this attachment will be an excellent addition to any flexi click mm. system we've got out there. Mm. So, um, when it comes to scope of delivery, I believe the the attachment is available separately. Yep. But you can also buy it as part of a kit. I think is that right? Yeah. So if you've already got the kit um, and you just want to upgrade with an additional item, that's fine. This fits both the uh, the 15 newton meter machine and the 35 mm. newton machine meter machine, as in this case. So. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. Um, as I said, this, this has been an accessory that we've be really been waiting for. Mm. I'm pretty sure there's people out there, hopefully in the chat, that have also been asking when is this going to launch. Well, officially, as of now, this should be available in the market for you to purchase. Usual retailers online, as well as your traditional bricks and mortar. So please, feel free, grab it, give us some feedback, because I would really appreciate it to get some honest feedback on what you think. Me and Danny, as well as the whole production team, mm. we are really happy to have it out there. Yeah, no, it's been something that's been missing from the FlexClick range. It's nice to... Uh, it's a nice little, uh, um, filled a little gap there. Perfect. Okay, so um, I think we'll go to the next tool, and I think that's a good opportunity to get Lawrence in. Yes. So let's, so let's say goodbye to Dan for a second. Yep, I'm going to pop off here for a bit. And I will get out a couple of machines. Lawrence, how are you doing? Very well. Yeah, Hello. Nice, nice Christmas and all I, that. I did, well, I put on a few kilograms, as you can <laughs> probably tell. Um, but no, I had a lovely time, thank you very much. Good. And Happy New Year to everyone uh, watching as well. Um, it's nice to be back. Uh, and certainly, yeah, the right time for me, right at the beginning of the year, we've got lots of new products to talk about, which is when I get wheeled out of the cupboard That's and right, become yeah. useful for, a, for, <laughs> about, for about five minutes. Well, then we send you away to go and make sure we get all the rest of the good tools, because it takes you, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an important job that you do for us, making sure that, you know, we're pushing back, making sure that we feed back all the information we get from the market, as well as you guys in the streams, because we have passed a lot of the information and feedback from you guys back to our product, man product managers centrally and say, you know, there's a market for certain tools, so it's been really beneficial having you guys give us the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Right, um, so this is, this is actually a machine that we got a little bit of feedback from, not only just people face-to-face -face here in the training centre, but also online. Now, a little bit of history, I guess we could say that when it comes to our 18-volt hammers, we've got excellent range, we've got excellent prestige when it comes to hammers in general, over 90 years worth of prestige in SDS mm. hammers, SDS, ha SDS and SDS Max. And when it comes to the 18-volt range, this was one of our top-line ones. This was the GBH 18V-26, and we had the 26F. So this product's always been already been in the range for many years. However, what's coming out, or what has come out, is this one, Lawrence, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. So this is brand new for us. This is called the GBH 18V-24. Um, it's going to sit slightly underneath the 26 in terms of performance, but it really fills a gap um, within our range of, of cordless hammer drills um, and covers a kind of, yeah, just a new power to weight ratio and a new performance kind of spectrum, I guess, within what we have to offer to, uh, to, to you guys at home. So um, I love this drill, okay? It's got a maximum drilling capacity of up to 24 millimeters. Uh, it's a 2.4 joule machine as well. But what I really love about it is the number of features that you have in this drill um, for the size and the price point that, that it's actually gonna be selling at. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, Principally, mm -hmm printably safety features. So traditionally within this sort of three kilogram class of SDS plus hammer, um, you don't usually get a lot. You don't usually need a lot to be fair. You just want a good, reliable, brushless SDS plus machine that'll keep going um, all day long. Yeah, so the, yeah, the GBH 18V-21. Now that's a machine you guys are all very familiar with. It's an excellent machine, 
Mm. But if I'm being honest, if I can be honest, it's bare bones. It doesn't have any internal, it doesn't, it doesn't have additional safety features like we had with the top end 26 and 26F model. Yeah. So with this one, as Lawrence is going to, sorry, as I cut you off. No, really, no, no, that's quite. As you say, that's where this really fills the gap for us, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. So first of all, kickback control, which we know is really important on, on a drill of this size and of this power. So really sensitive kickback control built into it. Um, protects from injury, obviously. We know what the benefits of kickback is, but it's nice now to be bringing that into a drill that's that's kind of now at the, the, the lower spectrum of the performance level, the sort of everyday workhorse kind of STS plus drill. Um, additionally to that, it has built-in vibration control as well, so it's got a, a nice, uh, it's got the ability to, to absorb a lot of vibration that again protects you, the user, um, from repetitive strain injury. You can see here at the back that it does have the floating handle. Um, <clears throat> indicated by the, the rubber overmold there. Um, and then it's got lots of nice features as well as the HMI interface. So constantly giving you, the user, a visual update as to what's going on with the tool. With, if it overheats, if the battery's flat, it's all there right in front of you. So you always know what's happening. And in addition to that, you've also got um, some different power settings. So a lot of our bigger, um, more premium SDS hammers have the, the soft start feature, which is really popular, it allows the mm -hmm. user to not always go in full power. Sometimes you want to get a cleaner, um, a cleaner hole uh, when, the, when you're drilling. Um, and this, this has that feature built into it as well via the, the, the yeah, Bluetooth. Yes, exactly. Because this is a connected tool, because it's in the name, it's a C. Uh, there is a slight departure in how we've traditionally done connectivity. We've often had the GCY module, which was uh, the little external window where you put the little coin battery in and the little, the little chip, the GCY module, to give that tool Bluetooth connectivity. So this is one of the first tools where now that's integrated. You yes, see on the side here, punch into the close-up, there's now a small uh, little, little connectivity icon on the outside, and that means this is an integrated connected tool. So you don't have to worry now about the connectivity module battery going flat or whether or not this actual product came with the connectivity module. This one's already got it baked in. Absolutely. Just, lot, just less things to worry about. Uh, as Lawrence says, because we've got the connectivity module that allows you to make all of the changes via the HMI uh, at the back. If you look at the older model, uh, we had some user functionality, but it was a very simple button on the back here. We have it called EPC. I think we used to call that electronic precision control. Yes, so essentially indeed. that does a very similar thing to what we're able to do with the newer machine, but now you have the ability to adjust that via the app. So I think there's three settings. You've got a low, medium, and high performance setting. Yeah. So it just gives you a little extra flexibility when you're working out there so you can use it however you like. I think I've set this one up, actually. Uh, I think, so in automatic mode, it's going to be running at full power. So I'm just going to give it a little blip so you can hear. So if you're on the mic, on head, if you're on headphones, beware. So. That's in full power. And I've already adjusted the favorite mode to be on the lower setting. So you can at least hear. I can feel it, but you can hear the two most extreme differences in the performance level. And you can tweak that as much as well. You've got three stages to tweak that value. And if you have finished using it in the soft setting, just one press of a button and it's back up to full speed again. Yeah, so, so nice, clean, accurate, tidy drilling if you want it and then plenty of power if you want to get destructive with it. Exactly. Either later on or maybe you put it into chisel mode. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great all-round performer. It's up to 4,350 blows per minute, so there's plenty of, mm -hmm. of hitting power behind it, um, up to 980 RPM, so the drilling speed is good. And as I mentioned, it, it's compact. It's, it's just below three kilograms uh, in weight. Um, it's, it's a great drill. We're really, really looking forward to seeing how this one does. Yeah, so I mean, because you guys are you're there, you're virtual, you can see the product, but you can't feel it. There is a few little things that's worth showing. One of the things that I really like is if the difference between the older style models. You see here you had your forward and back selector on the top here. Okay, that's fine, it looks, it's great. However, I actually really like the change in the new machine because it's gone to what's, you guys are probably more familiar when you have your normal combis. You see it's just mm. a simple flip here, which means in one-handed operation, it's a lot easier instead of having to almost break your grip when you're trying to change it on this, on the older one, it's a little harder. You have to take your thumb and move it to the top, which is a little less secure. It's a minor thing, but these minor things all add up for a better yeah. performance, better, better, better working experience. The other thing I'd like to show you, uh, very quickly, I'll grab a normal battery. Oh, I say normal, Procore battery. Okay, I'm just going to use the tool again, so apologies if you've got headphones on. I'm going to try and set off the kickback control here. So you see on this machine, right? 
I was a bit gentler the first time, and the second time I gave it more of a spin, which is probably the kind of reaction you're going to get anyway when you, if you were to jam. Mm -hmm. However, on the new machine, it is much, much more sensitive, which is great, which means it cuts in earlier. So we've dialed in that algorithm. So, see, I don't know if you can see yeah, that. Look at that. Really, really kicks in really quick. And again, because now it has a HMI on the back, on the close-up cam, you can see it's flashing red on the back. So now you've got a HMI that gives you a, a, a visual indication of what's happening. Yeah. On the old model, you just had the LED that flashed on the front. So we've added, we've, it's an incremental improvement over the machine. Yeah. So I we, we obviously really like the GBH 18V-26 and the 26F. 24 doesn't replace it necessarily. No. Nope. But it really does add a lot of the new functionality that we've been working on over the years to it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think uh, one thing we'll go on before we move on, because it's important to note, when it came to the GBH 18 V-26 and the 26F, uh, it had this shape because of the dust extraction. Thank you, thank you. Is we had the GDE 16, so the dust extraction unit here. And that would typically slide on the bottom here. Okay, and it would use the contacts on the front of the tutorial. So it will use the actual battery power, uh, the battery on the tool to also run this dust extraction unit. And this was excellent, especially if you're doing, doing drilling overhead, yeah. or if you're just wanting to, if you're, even if you're just drilling horizontally and you want to make sure there's less cleanup. The advantage here is that the new machine uses the same context. So if you want to have the attachment, there you go. And now you've got an excellent setup for overhead drilling or just, just making your site quicker and easier to, sorry, cleaner and thus easier to work on. Yeah. So, Great, perfect. Even if, you don't, if, if you've already got the accessory, it's backwards compatible. If not, there's plenty of these out in the market for you. Yeah. So, right, okay. Um, I think we could get Dan back on. And yeah, let's get Dan back let's get on to talk about the next product. Well, let's have a look and see if we've got any questions first. We might oh, well keep you on for Yeah, good point. Okay, right. So, do we have any questions, Lizzie? Perfect. We do indeed. We've got some old, old favourites back. We've got Lewis. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, mate. He yeah. also says... <laughs> to make sure that Lawrence has got his windows closed because we don't want to lose him again. <laughs> <laughs> he's not, he's not going to make that mistake again, no. <laughs> Thanks, Lewis. No, um, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> and then we've got a few people. Uh, Stuart Andrews want to see an 18-volt biscuit jointer. Yeah, we've heard, mm -hmm. um, I think last time we were on stream, yep. I think we, we let slip that there, are, there, was, there were rumours, um, but I don't think we can say more than that. Yeah, nothing official at the moment, but um, never say never. And thank you for uh, for the for the feedback um, because it, it does further prove the need for them in the UK. Mm -hmm. mm. It's yeah. something we've been missing from the range for a little while now. So yeah, definitely being we, we will acknowledge that 100. percent I've got a box full of biscuits next door. I've not been able to use them for ages. <laughs> <laughs> and then another one from Stuart um, got the 12 volt GWB 12 volt 10. Um, angle drill, but would also like to see that 18 volt version. Ah, yeah, um, that's come up as uh, mm. recently. Um, I was at did a show uh, in when was it November? I think it was, and it came up uh, a couple of times. So um, again, I can't confirm or deny anything right now, but it's something that I am in conversation with the the product team in Germany about, um, and it's yeah. It, yeah. It's something that's missing. Mm -hmm. Is is again what we would yeah, uh, you, what we would acknowledge. What Lawrence is saying is you, you're not the only one. That we, no. we have, all three of us have all had people approach us at shows or at training sessions yeah. and say, this is this is a product that there yeah. is definitely a keen interest in the UK to yeah. to have a version of. So yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. We understand that. Okay. Cal Vaughan is also back. Hi guys, always exciting getting to see the new tools. Never get enough. Any update on the new 18 volt nailers? first fixer and maybe an 18 volt stapler or tacker. Ah, yes, okay. I, well, again, I've got to say watch this space. Nothing official mm -hmm. that I can share at present, but um, what I will say is the second fix nailer that we launched last year has proved to be very popular, very well received. It's mm -hmm. a brilliant tool. Uh, and the team behind that um, are not satisfied with just doing a second fix nailer. Um, there are things happening in the background that I can't allude to very much at the moment. So please just stick with us, watch this space, and as soon as we can, we will be announced here first. Definitely. Frisian is asking for a new corded 12 millimeter router. A new corded router? Well, that's, a, that that's I wasn't expecting that. I think, is that 12 mil or half inch? Half inch. 12 mil. Oh, 12 mil. Hmm. Okay. I don't think, I'm not sure about that. I'll have to look into that. 
Yeah, no, that's really that's mm. a real curveball for us because yeah. we, we're used to hearing questions about um, obviously a cordless router, um, which again we we sh we muster under our breaths, um, but a new corded router. Um, we do have the GKF 600 out in the market at the moment, um, mm. so that is the only corded router that we currently have as an option. I'm not sure about the different collet sizes on that. Um, We'd maybe have to go away and, and, and dig out the details, but yeah, it's primarily a half inch. <coughs> that one, that's the biggest okay. half inch we currently do. Okay. Got Alistair asking for more SDS drills and grinders, and also if there are any new tools on the 12 volt platform. Right, when it comes to more 18 volt SDS drills, yes, but we can't <laughs> tell you too much. Yeah. Um, there is obviously um, when we made when we talked earlier about the fact that there's a there's a, there's a very sufficient gap. There's a, there's a very uh, lucrative gap in between the 21 series, the 18, GBH 18V-21 mm. and the 26. The 24 fills that gap, or, or at least sits in the gap nicely, but there is obviously still range within there to have some other machines either higher than 26 and maybe even lower than 24. So there is space, yep. but we can't tell you too much yet. When it comes to, uh, sorry Lizzie, what was the other point? It was talking about more mm. 12 volt products, 12 yep. volt system tools. Um, I think there's a few coming, there are still a, a little early, um, but again, as Lawrence says, as mm. we always say, when we get the marketing samples and we're able to tell you about them, then we'll be straight on the live streams we'll be talking about that. This yeah. live stream itself, being a live stream talking about new products in general, is slightly different to how we've done live streams last year. Mm -hmm. Last year we were doing a lot of live streams on range, but now we've yep. mostly completed that, there's a few more to do. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at different specific products and also looking more at products that are coming new. So there'll be plenty of opportunities. Maybe we'll do teaser live streams once we've got the marketing samples. So yeah, yeah. there are some 12 volts coming to the system. There are, yep. And then that last, I think there was a three part, wasn't it, Lizzie? What was that last part? What was that, we covered it. Perfect, okay. Yeah. Another one from Alistair. Any update on the 18 volt M-Class vacuum spotted over in Australia? Ah, okay. Um, again, can't give anything definitive because the product is in development. Um, so, Yes, we are, we are working on it, but I have no solid information to share with you just yet. So again, I'm gonna to have to go to what feels like my new default answer of mm. watch the space because we'll announce it here first as soon as we can. I've seen um, M-Class ones out there, but internationally not UK specific. Um, so ours is obviously going to be due to different regulations, different rules and regulations. Yeah. So we've got to, obviously we've got to fi fill those out first and, and make sure that it's all above board and, and, and legal before yep. it can meet the marketplace. But again, well, as soon as we know anything about it, we'll be straight on the live streams to tell you about it. Yeah. Jack L says, Happy New Year, guys. Dan, thanks for the tour before Christmas. And many thanks for the circular saw repair. Much appreciated. All right, no problem. No problem. Good. Wake your friends down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we? Uh, is there any more questions, or should we go on? Okay. So, uh, right, I'll get out of the way. Cool. We'll get you back in in a little bit. We'll talk about some other tools. But the next product we want to talk about is uh, a machine that I know plenty of you guys have been looking for as well. Uh, I'll put this over here. Yeah. Put right there. I've got a heavyweight thing to lift up. So. Well, while you've got that, I'll grab it. Here we go. Thank you. There you go. So the next product I want to talk about is the GTB 18V-45 and the GMA55. So this is, uh, it looks familiar, it looks like an old product, I'll grab it here. So you might, you might recognize this old favorite, this old collated screw gun. This was the uh, GSR uh, 18V-18 VECTE, that was a bit of a mouthful. I'm glad that we changed the name, so we used to call all our screw guns GSRs. Uh, but this being a collated screw gun, or more likely a drywall screw gun, we decided we'd change the name to make it a bit easier to differentiate from our normal drill yeah. drivers. So now calling the GTBs. Now, so this was out in the market for many years with a MA uh, an MA55 attachment which looked very similar to the one we've got on here. However, we, did, we recently discontinued this model in favour for the replacement. So, uh, as you can see, 18 volt. It runs a quarter inch hex bit, uh, a hex socket attachment. Yep. Uh, this one's obviously got the attachment on it, so it will have the extra long screwdriver bit that goes in there, but you can fit normal, uh, normal hex screwdriver bits in if you don't want to use the attachment. It's brushless, just like the predecessor. Uh, there are some slight differences between this model, the older model, and the newer model. So the newer model is more powerful, so it's actually got a little bit more torque. If I try and remember what the torque was on the old one, I think it was up to 
uh, I think it was five newton meters of torque, and now this model is up to six newton meters of torque. Mm. Might not sound like much, but that allows you now to run slightly longer screws. I think the maximum screw diameter we mm. had on the old model was about four mil, and now we're up to six millimeters and six newton meters of torque. That's plenty for a drywall yeah, screw. Exactly. Guy. The machine runs, I think, I think it's a little bit faster, running at a maximum RPM of 4,500 RPM. Um, and, yeah, I think. Oh, and there's a few extra features to the tool as well. Because there's some quite impressive ones on here as well. I quite like this Yeah, one. on the older machine, I say the older machine, on the previous model, we just had an LED on the bottom here. But as you can see on the new machine, and I'll talk about that in detail later, we've now got a little control panel on the bottom here, which has a, a mode, which I actually honestly will show you in a minute on the demonstration. This smart auto stop or this self, uh, the power save mode is an excellent feature. Okay, let me put it back together because uh, to be honest, if you're using a drywall gun, you really want to have the complete setup because then you've got the ability to really be doing a one hand job. Yeah. Because you know, normally you'll be holding your drywall up with one hand and then you'll be using the other hand to drive your screws in. Without that, it's going to be it's a two-man job, probably. Yeah, it? you're going to need the apprentice there to exactly. hold them forward up. Now, so uh, let's probably talk about the GMA in a little bit more detail. Actually, I'll take this off just to show you. It's just a friction fit here, nice and simple. So the actual accessory itself, you can see it's, it's very similar to how, how we had the old MA55. In fact, it's so similar that you actually can use these backwards and forwards compatible. So if you have the uh, MA55 or you want to add a GMA55 to the old GSR, 18 volt, then you can use this as well. Yeah. Now the controls are very, very simple. Uh, you obviously just feed your normal screws through here. Uh, the, you have a fine adjustment here, which allows you to uh, dial the screw in and out. Fine adjustment here if you want, to, if you, the screw is a bit proud or if it's going in just slightly too deep. Yeah, that's just, incremental as well, so you can dial it in and out. It's you, extremely you, fine, yeah. Yeah, you can know exactly where you are there. At the end here, you've got the ability to, uh, to do your big adjustments for your screw length. That's very, that's, again, that's just a one button attachment for, to adjust the foot there. That's right, so. exactly. Uh, and, and that's essentially it in a way, isn't it? Um, the, the, I think the only minor changes to some of the materials that we used uh, to make the actual GMA55 slightly lighter. Mm. So the actual attachment's a little lighter compared to the MA55, but essentially, apart from that. It wasn't that heavy, to be fair, yeah. in, the, in the first place. So. Exactly. Okay, click on, and that's it. Now, when it comes to the tool, we've made some minor changes. Now we've got the uh, lock-on switch. I've got to remind myself. No, but I don't think we had a lock-on switch on the old model. Not on that one, no. So you'd have to hold the trigger down the whole time when using that. What we've got here is just a simple lock-on switch. Let me just see if it's going to run. <coughs> okay. Uh, it's actually, in, the motor's changed slightly because we've made some uh, improvements to the internal brushless motor. We've kept the ergonomics as well. My favorite thing about the drywall screw guns is the fact that we, uh, mm. we've actually designed the, the ergonomics, so that's ideally the best way to hold it as opposed to your normal pistol grip. Mm. So that's been retained from the original machine, although I must admit they've added a lot more soft grip rubber there, which makes that a far more comfortable experience, mm. very comfortable there. So what you've got, as I said, you've got your lock-on switch here, so you would depress the trigger and then you'd push this down here. <laughs> Okay, so if you're using this mm. all the time, you leave the machine running mm. and you drive your screws into the drywall as you go along. That's very typical to many models out there. It's important to note that the agent, it doesn't drive the screwdriver bit until you push into the material. So there's a, there's a dog clutch inside that, that picks up mm. the drive as soon as you uh, apply pressure and drives the screws straight right. in. But what you've got is you've got the motor, you've got the motor, <laughs> motor continuously running all the time yeah. in the background. So that has, well, that has some draw on the motor as you're going. <laughs> now, so what we've added to this model, as you said, is the power save mode. And what we've got here is the ability to toggle a button at the bottom. I'll press that once. The little LED will light up there now at the bottom saying this is now in power save mode. And you can see that if I pull the trigger, nothing happens. Hmm. So what I can do now is I can pull the trigger, lock it in and on now. And what we can do there is this machine is now primed, ready to go. What, what will happen is once you apply pressure, then the drive will engage and you'll drive your screw in. The advantage there is the fact that you're not going to be wasting energy in between screws. Mm. So Danny's been uh, kind and he's made a little mock-up here for us. So yep. just, just to explain what it is, it's just a simple bit of drywall on a little frame here just to show this automatic function. So I will drive a screw in very quickly and I'll show yep. you the power save mode and hopefully if I drive this straight, it'll do a decent job. Mm. Okay, so as soon as I apply pressure and I'm going to plunge it through just one smooth action, <laughs> Okay, and there you are, easy as that. Machine's still on, still running, but because the power save mode is engaged, the machine is idle. Yep. Okay, I'll do one more, so you can find a spot. Okay, it's easy as that. So if you've got lots of these to do, 
Okay, mm. you don't want to waste your, uh, the, the charge of your battery, then you can do that. The advantage as well, obviously, if you if you because you're going to be worried about weight with a machine like this, you, it allows you to put a smaller battery on there to get the same amount of runtime. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be powering it up so much. I mean, the Procore four amp hour battery is ideal because it's the right. It's yep. a nice compact size. I really pr appreciate that. Um, but it will be fully compatible with any of the 18 volt batteries, Procore or otherwise. Mm. Um, when it comes to the fact that it's a brushless machine, it means you've got a lot of, lot of efficiency and a lot of runtime out of it. Now, what I'll also do very quickly is I'll show you an alternative um, fact that you can also get it in a more uh, bare bones uh, execution. So you can get it with just the, uh, how do you describe it? Just the simple collar, just a simple chuck, yep. uh, depth, depth gauge adjustment. attacher. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're not running lots of screws or you don't want to fork out for the, uh, the collated screw gun or the, the, how do you describe it? Sorry. The, um, Auto feed. Yeah, the auto feed attachment. Feed. Then you can obviously just buy it in this mode here. Which leads me on to one slight improvement that we've made to the actual attachment head as well. So what you've got, as you normally, uh, if you're driving your screws normally, you've got the ability here to rotate the collar here and that will change the depth of the screw. So that changes, that moves in and out this part of the, the, the yeah. chuck. Um, what you've got the ability to do now is you can push that back, all right, and that means you can it'll uh, automatically put it into a mode which allows you to now take the screws out. Yep. Before on the older model, it's only a minor inconvenience, but you'd have to remove the head mm. in order to get the full depth. Otherwise, you'd have to dial that in all the way back, yep. which would ruin your depth adjustments. So now you've just got the quick and easy function to move it into screw driving and unscrew driving mode. Mm. So it's a minor, minor, minor uh, comfort. Not comfort. Uh, yeah, it's more of a comfort easy. feature. Yeah, comfort it, yeah. feature. But to be honest, it's the power save mode for me that's the real significant change. It really is a, it seems like a minor improvement, but it's been well thought out. Yeah, I quite like the one touch adjustment that you can make on basically all of the, all of the settings for it. Mm, yeah. So a, a, a good tool, a favorite tool from my side. Now, I believe there's a, a number of different uh, versions of this tool out there. I believe you can buy the machine uh, on its own. So uh, in this orientation with auto battery, I believe that comes in a carton. Uh, the other variation is you can now buy um, the GMA55 on its own as well. So that's good if you've got the older machine and you just want the attachment, or if you purchase this model and then later down the line you want to get mm. the, the GMA55, perfect. But more importantly, uh, and we listened to the feedback from you guys in the market when we had the older machine, you really wanted to have, and it makes sense, it's a bit obvious in there, mm. it's a bit obvious if you think about it, you want to be able to buy uh, these two accessories together. Uh, I think we sell this uh, as a, I think we sell this as a, Remember, body only, yes, body only in a carton, but with these two parts, mm. which is perfect. Excellent. Yeah. That's all. That's really the version out there that I think most people will be going for. Yeah, I'm right. I'm thinking that um, obviously because this is a, um, compatible with the older machine, mm -hmm. was the original MA55 compatible with this one? Uh, I think it is. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty I sure. There's no reason why it wouldn't be. So if you already have the MA55 and it's working perfectly already, and you don't need that extended um, screw length then there's nothing wrong with buying that, the, uh, the newer machine to, to drive it using the older attachment. Yeah, so yeah. If, if, you're, if you're already in the market for a G, uh, an MA55, but they're out of stock, GMA55, yeah. perfect. You get back, back, get back up and working. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Ooh. So um, while still on the topic of drywall, there's another, there's a new product as well, another product, which, uh, which might be familiar to some of you guys out there that might remember the brand RotoZip. Yes. Is that fair? Yep. Um, we've, we've, um, we purchased RotoZip a number of years ago. Um, uh, didn't really sort of do too well in the market over here, but was massive, massive in America. In America. Mm. Um, so we decided to bring the product back, obviously now, because most people are building um, drywall internal walls. Um, and it's a great way of cutting holes for sockets in drywall or, uh, how do you call them? Partition walls, internal partition walls. Um, so we've bought the GCU, we have the GCU um, 18V-30. So again, very similar to our, um, our previous Rotozip models we've done. In fact, they take exactly the same um, spiral cutter attachments. But this allows you to, through, a, through the collet here, uh, drive a spiral cut a bit and um, cut out um, sockets into into walls or anything into a wall really. Mm -hmm. um, if you're relieving um, drywall anywhere around a, 
a drywall warm, yes, of course. then it's obviously it's a, it's a perfect means of yeah. cutting it. The other advantage as well is obviously because the dust extraction is built into this as well, it's incredibly dust free. Yeah. I was going to say because mm. you know there are other tools out there that do a, that can do the job. I mean, obviously the one that comes to mind, obviously, as many people probably use multi tools, mm -hmm. but you know they are they, you know they are fast oscillating tools, but they're not necessarily fast in application. And more importantly, as you've mm. rightly pointed out. Integrated dust extraction, that's that's really key. Yeah. Because these are not these are very, very messy applications. So this is now a dedicated fast drywall cutting tool. There's also some a couple of other intelligent uh, design pieces here, like the uh, the switch, the on-off switch here. It's um you have to hold it down to start the start the machine, but it's fully rubber sealed. So we're trying to keep that all of the um, the dust out of the machine as much as possible. So um, not that you'd get much up here because the dust extraction is really that good. We'll do a little test in a minute yes. and uh, yeah. we'll see um, how, it, exactly. how it goes. Yeah, so spec wise, it's a very fast tool, so it's running up at 30,000 RPM. Um, it has a, a toolless. Uh, a tool, a tool a spindle lock, so you've got, you don't have to actually, uh, it's got a little button here no, so you can lock the spindle. Yep. Um, it has a cutting depth of 45 millimetres, uh, maximum depth to cut, um, and it's got a very simple slim grip, 17 millimetres. Yeah. Slim the depth grip. adjustment is also on, so you adjust the foot here, same as you would do with any sort of a, similar to a, a router, but a handheld router that you can use in there. That's right, yeah, it comes with a set of collets as well, I mean it's got one in there, I can't remember what size it is, but I believe it's there's the 3.17 millimeter, 3.96 millimeter, and then I think this larger one here is 600. And yeah, this 6. is 3.17 millimeter here. But they, mm -hmm. um, it also comes with two different um, spiral cutter bits. Um, I don't know whether you could see that on the uh, on the small camera here. That's one. That's the one, and then I think the other one is on the ma machine we're going to demo. Yes, this one has uh, the spiral cutters going right the way to the end here, so this is perfect for plunge cutting. Uh, whereas the one that we, uh, we're going to be using in a second has a blank say, section at the end here and this allows you to plunge cut into drywall and cut um, around the internal diameter of a, of a socket. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do that in a second uh, with the other, drill, the other spiral cutter bit yeah. and you'll see how that, how that comes Perfect. out. So um, in regards to any other features, um, it's got soft start, uh, um, it's got restart protection which is obviously important when you've got an 18 volt machine mm. uh, and then finally it's got a, a brushless motor and a brake. So it's got yes. so it's, mm. it's running efficiently because it's brushless, uh, and it's also switches off nice and quickly because of that integrated brake system. So yeah. I don't think you can ask for much more really when it comes Not to. Not really. Shows. So again, it's our first foray back into this for quite some time. Um, it does exactly what it says on the tin, as they say. Mm. It's it's a, it's a perfect basic machine for doing spiral cutting. Yeah. So uh, as we this is the new year, uh, we've demonstrated with the the GTB 18V-45. We started doing some pool, uh, tool demos here in the studio. Um, mm. Why not add to another one? Let's, why don't we explain this demonstration, what you're going to do, and let's do another live tool demo. Right, so behind this particular wall here, I have some sockets set into a frame behind. So uh, I've already marked on here where the sockets are, these little crosses. So if you were putting a wall together, you'd already put the sockets in the wall. So you'd, you'd pop the drywall up and you'd mark where the sockets are so you can go back later and you can cut them out. Um, so. If I do a plunge cut on this one here, and then just go around the outside of the box, um, the end of that um, spiral cutter bit will travel around the outside of the socket box, and you get a nice clean cut. And then you can just pop your, your socket fascia on there. So, okay, perfect. Um, it is quite a high frequency machine, um, so Rob, you might want to turn down the microphones a little bit. <laughs> And I also have to have the dust extraction on as well, obviously. Um, without it, it can be quite dusty, but hopefully with it, you'll see that it doesn't leave much in the way of dust behind it. I'll take a smaller battery, actually. I'll stand behind you. Just so it's lighter. I need... Right, so Joy's a live TV. I hope this works. There you go, turn on.
You can see how clean a finish you've actually got on that. So it's cut a nice uh, rectangular box out, just ready for your socket plate to be fitted on there. So yeah, nice and clean cut there. Okay. And again, minimal amount of dust has been produced. Um, I'm perfectly clean. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, obviously health and safety is probably what you guys are shouting. I was going, oh, you need, you need your dust mask and stuff. But mm. trust me, I've worked with Dan for many months now, <laughs> over a year now. And the fact that he's spotlessly clean after doing any kind of tool demonstration really is a point to be made there. That's impressive. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So dust extraction is excellent with this tool. <laughs> and that's going to save you a lot of time on site just having to tidy up. And that's ignoring just the regulations out there. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not just silica dust you have to worry about. Even drywall dust is a consideration to the HSC, and you need to make sure that you're on top of it. Yeah. We've so heard it's... about people getting um, uh, prosecutions for just using Stanley knives in places, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're outside of a dis bespoke cutting area. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a, a soft sort of bit of a touch point for it at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. But hopefully you could see in that demonstration. I mean, we could have probably gone a bit quicker, but... You don't want you want to, you want to do a decent finish, but you can go you can go very rapidly through these materials. I took my time. I think uh, partially, if you go too fast, you put too much effort through it, you run the risk of, of breaking the spiral cutter. But the other thing is, I'm right-handed, and this is an incredibly <laughs> awkward way of doing it. Yeah, that's that's always the case. Whenever you're trying to do a demonstration, typically you're always going to be standing where the camera wants to yeah. be. But as you hopefully you could see there, the, the application, no effort. For, uh, no, actually. Uh, not as much noise as I was expecting, to be honest. I have heard this, in, I have heard this before. Mm. Uh, I was expecting it a bit louder, but no, if you do the application correctly, very quiet, very fast, and very clean. So yeah. that's, that's all you could really want out of a tool. Yeah. So a new product to the range, uh, a really good uh, hole filler for us, because we haven't had any kind of tool like this in the range for us recently. No, it's been missing for quite some time, so we'll see how it goes. All right. Okay, so um, I think, let's get Lawrence back on, let's, and let's see if we can answer some more questions before we move on, shall we? Yes, I think so. It's a good time. Come on, Lawrence, let's, let's, jump, let's get you back on again. So, Lizzie, do we have any questions in the meantime? We do indeed. Okay. We've got lots of comments today. Dave's workbench, will the 24 come as an F? I think he's talking about the GBH that we talked about earlier. Okay. Uh, my understanding is that the current, currently we will not have a, an F, which is a removable chuck version of the GBH 18 V-24. Not yeah. yeah, not at launch, not not in the first instance. I think the the plan is probably to see our sales go and see what the demand is, and then um, adapt it if we if we need to. Some of the feedback we had with the 26. So there are plenty of people that like that functionality to remove the chuck, uh, to take the SDS chuck off and replace it with a three jaw chuck. Yeah. Uh, the only uh, significant difference with those models are it makes it slightly more uh, front heavy and slightly longer in the mm. front because you have yeah. to have that additional mechanism. But that's the only drawback. I think one of the main advantages or one of the main focuses we're doing with the, the new 24 hammer is that it's short and light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we want to, if you add that mechanism, maybe the idea is that maybe it's, it's, it's going back on that, that yeah. design aesthetic that we're pushing for. We've got a question asking about the Biturbo brushless vacuum. Um, that would probably be the same question as the M class, really, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say the one that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully coming. Well, I say hopefully coming <coughs> in development as soon as we can let you know more. We definitely will. I think as I think you've given it there that we did let it let loose um, that it's most likely, and I'm pretty sure it's still most likely to be a bi-turbo machine. It has to be to be an M-class vac. Yep. You need that additional <coughs> power to draw air through uh, the filter, but uh, it's not nothing's official yet. I think Correct. it's more of a speculation that it's yeah. going to be an M yeah. uh, a bi-turbo M-class. Got another question about 18 volt flex shaft. 18 volt flex shaft. Um, the only flex shaft I know is the Dremel one. Yeah, um, maybe Flexi Click. Is that one maybe? Yeah, I mean, if there's a, if the only thing that might be in range is uh, there is the, obviously we have a new Flexi Click model. So obviously at the beginning of the presentation we showed you the GSR 18 V 60 FC. Which is the current range of FlexiClick 18 volt system? There is a, there are plans to update that. Uh, I think we've already uh, teased that with the new, the launch of the new 90 <coughs> series combis. Yeah, well, it's, it's no secret that when we bring out the, when mm -hmm. we brought out the 90 GSR and GSB, um, or I should start again, the GSR GSB 18V-90 mm -hmm. last year, um, that is the platform, the chassis, if you like, for the FlexiClick, which, uh, which is, again, in development um, and should be coming later this year. 
Yeah, so uh, as we said, yes, there is a, if, if it's FlexiClick you're looking at, then yeah, at least we can say that there is a new FlexiClick system coming. They were asking if there's going to be one like similar to Ryobi. Well, we can't really comment on the similarities of competitors, but um, we can talk about... Yeah. Well, <laughs> talk I'm, about I'm not actually familiar with that specific no. machine um, or model or range of products. Uh, if, you, if you want, you can give us more information during the stream. We'll pick it up in the next uh, series yeah. of uh, questions. Or we can, I can just have a look at it offline, and I maybe, maybe between us we can have a look at it and see. Yeah, I think it's probably worth us looking into it anyway. I'm, I'm not familiar but with that particular product, no. personally. I've not had no. a chance to look at it. Got a question from George saying, Happy New Year. Is an 18 volt ratchet in the pipeline? An 18 volt ratchet. So I have no information on an 18 volt ratchet currently. Um, certainly, yeah, no. The, the, the short answer is no, but never say never. And again, as soon as something does come to light, then we'll share it here first. Mm -hmm. Question um, saying, would the Ampshare versus Procore battery make a difference on the 18 volt 26? So all the amp shares are Procore, essentially. Yep. So there's no difference between um, a partner, Procore, and ours. Uh, they, the, all the Procore, so they've, the amp share consists of, a, I believe, the 4 amp, the 5, the 8, and uh, I think the 12. The 12, well. yep. yeah. So um, the only real difference is that is it's branded slightly different colours. So they tend to be in a grey colour instead of our red, mm -hmm. and it will have whatever partner logo on it, as opposed to, um, well, well, in addition to the Bosch branding. Mm. Uh, there's no difference in power output, uh, and in general, um, there's in general, general speaking, there's no problems putting any Procore battery on any machine. You get the same, no. you get the same uh, yeah. function. You might get a little bit better runtime. Might get a yeah. little bit more performance, depending. It's it is dependent on product. Generally speaking, adding a Procore battery to any product so has an advantage. Yeah, whether benefit, it's, yeah. whether it's branded as a, a Bosch Professional Power Tools one or mm -hmm. uh, a Bosch Partner exactly. battery, makes no difference. Yeah, the batteries uh, are the same. Exactly, battery. exactly. So the same, uh, vice versa. So if you were to get a one of the new Fine machines, for example, that runs the Procore battery, you can pop a Bosch one on there. You can pop yeah. any of the Partner Procore mm -hmm. uh, uh, power batteries on there, and it'd be fine. And the last one for now, are there any better universal vacuum hose connections for power tools in the 18 volt range? Uh, there's a whole range of connections that, that, mm -hmm. that, we can, that you, can, uh, you can get for anything from uh, 19 mil push fit connections all the way up to the standard ones that we use on, on, on all of our vacuums that, that we have. Um, there's also, for some of the machines, uh, like sanders, there's adapters for those as well. Um, it's a very comprehensive range. Obviously, if there's anything that you want us to look into specifically, pop it in the chat and we'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll certainly take a look at it and uh, hopefully be able to provide some part numbers for you if there's something specific you're looking for. He was asking for something universal that he could use regardless of, of, of brand. Um, it depends entirely if you're talking about fitting an uh, alternative brand extractor to a Bosch machine mm. or fitting a, um, a, a uh, alternative machine to a Bosch extractor. There's, there's varying different um, than ways that, that that could sort of be applied. Yeah. But if you send me the details or pop the details down in the chat or even send us an email through, um, I'll quite happily look into it for you. We do have some adapters that can be used like that. Yeah. Cool. OK, so that's questions up. <coughs> so. Um, we're spending a lot longer than we thought we were going to. We thought we were going to blast through uh, these new products, but I'm really glad that the, the Christmas break got everyone excited and had plenty <laughs> of questions to ask us. So the next machine we're going to have a look at is one of uh, a product that we ha isn't new necessarily, uh, but we actually haven't spent as much time on it as we wanted to. So I'm going to shuffle Dan off. Sorry, Dan. We'll oh, see you in a bit. Gotta go again. Back to my, back to my hole. <laughs> go. And Lawrence is going to talk to us about our new 18 volt grinders. Yeah, so um, this is one that launched right at the back of last year. Unfortunately, it got a bit buried. Um, we didn't get to spend as much time on it as we would have liked to, especially not considering the significance of it. Um, it may look like a 180 millimeter angle grinder, and you'll notice the eagle-eyed amongst you that it is cordless. Um, but this is, in fact, the latest addition to the Biturbo range. Um, it is 180 mil, as I mentioned. Being that it's by turbo brushless, it's got the, the bigger, more powerful motor in it, so it's pushing out around about 1500 watts of equivalent corded power, which means it's really, really very capable indeed. Um, but crucially, it provides the same cutting depth performance as a large angle grinder. 
So your typical 230 mil angle grinder will cut what? About 59 mil. 59 mil. Yeah, on our models anyway. This will do up to 61, so there's even a marginal gain actually yeah. with this machine. Um, and that makes it ideal for, I mean, with the right disc, when we have, uh, <laughs> we failed to attach a disc today, which is a <laughs> slight shame. Um, but with the right disc, you can cut concrete, you can cut through, I mean, you can cut scaffold, yep. absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, this thing eats its way through metal. Um, it's got a huge amount of power. Um, we did some testing with it just before Christmas, and um, yeah, it, it's phenomenal. It really is. Um, and yeah, additionally to that, it's you'll see notice that the uh, the head is actually offset the way that it the way that it comes out of the uh, out of the box, but it's rotatable. So you can either move the tool around or you can actually disconnect the head and rotate it yourself and put it into the perfect angle or the perfect position for yourself, depending on what application you're in, how you're going to be using it, and where you want it in relation to the paddle switch underneath. Okay, so. Again, um, something we refer to as a safety switch in a lot of our uh, a lot of our communications, but most would just refer to as a panel switch. A nice oh, yeah. pressure sensitive switch underneath, so that when you want the tool on, you press down as soon as you release, which makes it safer if the tool's actually dropped. Um, the tool, the power, the motor will stop. Yeah. So uh, I think the first time we ever teased this product was in the first ever live stream that we had, which was uh, about Xlock actually. But because this was a product that was coming out, we thought we'd tease that out. When it actually launched, we did uh, a live stream a few months ago. Uh, I think it was our metal working uh, live stream where we had uh, one of our colleagues from Accessories come in to talk about expert accessories, and we were talking about all the different accessories this machine runs as well, yeah. the 180 mil accessories. Um, so there are a few other live, there's some other videos that we've got out on our stream if you want to look at this product in a little bit more detail. But essentially in that presentation, we were just saying the fact that, as Lawrence points out, this is a, a small angle grinder, although yes, it is the bi-turbo, it's the, it's the 15, the 1500 watt version, but it's because of the, the small gearbox head, that's what makes it so different compared to the, the large angle grinder. We've got enough power here to drive the big accessories, so we can get, we can run the accessories that big, and um, we don't have a, the, the big gearbox that is fouling or, or taking up that space, so you don't lose the depth of cut. So yeah. it's a really great benefit. It's a really good combination of two factors. That means you've got quite a unique product in the market. Uh, this is a new product range for us, so we are very keen to make sure that this works. Because if this is successful, this is a, if this product sells out, sells well out there, then there's a lot of new new uh, products that might come up uh, following. And more importantly, I'm sure there's people already furiously typing, "Will it be Xlock? Will it be Xlock?" Well, it kind of depends on how successful this kind of product is for yeah. us. Because um, at the moment, Xlock is. Um, 155 to 125 millimeter accessories, plenty of accessories I should point out, but limited to the small angle grinder range. In the middle here, 180 mil, it would be nice if there were excellent accessories, but it's to see how big the market is, see how, how popular yeah. this machine yeah, is. Yeah, absolutely. So this one, as it comes right now, M14 spindle lock, which we're all familiar mm -hmm. with. Um, <clears throat> yeah, very easy to use. There we go. We have a, a, a one we used earlier. So that's the, this is one of our, this is our diamond, one of our diamond discs. Uh, Which the machine actually comes with. Good, perfect. Yeah, yeah it's the kind of it's the kind of accessory that makes a lot of sense on the machine. Yeah. And because it's expert, uh, this one and this particular one is, is is diamond. But part of our expert range means that this accessory lasts a lot longer uh, than a normal bonded abrasive and things like that. Obviously, with bonded abrasives, um, the disc itself will change over, t uh, will uh, reduce over time because you're wearing through the material. But if you're wanting to use this machine for maximum depth of cut then having a, a solid disc uh, that doesn't change d diameter in use, then diamonds is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best. These are the best of both. Uh, I don't know whether or not we actually had any uh, video lined up for this machine. Um, but it's, what we'll do is we will um, we'll show that in a, a later stream showing this, this in performance. But again, this is content that we've already got out there, in the, out there online anyway, so you can easily see this machine in practice. Um, showing how how important that depth of cut is and how it compares against a, a normal motor. Yeah, camera one. For anyone that's interested, Rob's currently covering his face because he knows that we do have some video footage. It's just not quite ready yet. Yeah. So we'll get that out to that, you. That was over the Christmas period, I think. It yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. Where um, I discovered that I don't know how to use an angle grinder. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, um, not at all. Covered myself in, in hot sparks. Yeah. We kept, when Danny and I came back in the new year, we were wondering who'd, who'd broken into our workshops and had made a mess. And now we now we know who. But 
it's uh, it's all in it's all for good fun. Yeah. And just just showing how I mean you were surprised. Well, no, surprise isn't the right word, but it that generally does have impressive performance. Yeah, you wouldn't it expect really does. it. Um, but running off an 18 volt system, although yes, Procore is not just any 18 volt system, but the bi-turbo system running 180 mil disc, you'd expect that you'd see some performance difference moving up from 125 millimeter. No, you don't. Just go through it like like butter. Yeah. It's oh. all to do with the perimeter speed of the, of the disc, so... It's Dan, in the, in the <laughs> <laughs> Dan in the distance, yeah, saying exactly. It, it, the machine is more than ample to run it. It's not like we've just bodged a product here together. No. It's been well thought out. Yeah, really has. Okay, so um, I don't know if there's anything else to talk about on this machine, apart from excellent machine already out in the market. Uh, accessories already exist for this. Um, bonded abrasive, diamond, etc. cetera. Um, not X-Lock yet, coming to the market soon. But I think uh, I, saw, I saw a little flag for some questions. Is that right, Lizzie? You've got questions on this product? Yeah, we've got some questions about X-Lock. Um, is X-Lock coming in bigger sizes? Yeah, that was this question here. So it entirely depends on how well received the 180 mil range is. Uh, whether we're going to go up to the really large, the 230 mil, for example, the 9 inch, uh, that's probably going to be later down the line. But as far as we know, uh, X-Lock, I say as far as you know, X-Lock is doing well. Yep. I, I think we've got some um, from previous live stream we talked about we've got uh, competitors from both accessories and power tools who have adopted it as a standard, yep. which is great because we're Bosch, we like to innovate, SDS, T-Shank, etc., Starlock, X-Lock is just another one of our innovations yeah. and we're very confident that if uh, once X-Lock uh, from the 115 and 125 mil is in the market fully, then there's a good chance that we'll develop larger sizes. But I think we've discussed it in previous, and Danny, you discussed it as well. I think there's a lot of health and safety red tape and things that need to be uh, ironed out first before we can move any system up to uh, the larger discs. It's very important. It's health and safety, guys. Okay. Just one more for the moment. Um, to really kick X-Lock grinders into the market, make official X-Lock M14 adapter. X-Lock to M14. Uh, we've had people ask about that. I think uh, there's a number of reasons why it's suboptimal at best, um, because you're adding adapters to adapters. You lose a lot of um, you lose a lot of the XLOT functionality when you have an adapter. Uh, and at the same time, if it's just a question about whether or not you want to be able to use um, old accessories on an XLOT machine, yeah, I understand. But if it's the other way around, where you want to, uh, you've got XLOT discs old, on an old, old M14. It's fine. Then the X Lock discs are compatible with an M14 machine. If you put an adapter um, on an X Lock grinder, is you're going to push the disc further away from the gearbox exactly. and then out of the guard. Yeah. So there's there's there's, there's a number of reasons why. Uh, there's, as far as I'm concerned, there's going to be no plans from us in a way to do that form of adapter. Okay, so I think that's all the questions on the, the new angle grinder. Thanks, Lawrence. Great. Let's uh, let's get. Let's uh, get Dan back in and we're going to discuss a new right. circular saw. We'll come back to you at the end. This away. Thank you, mate. So the next machine we're going to talk about is some circular saws. Uh, one of the machines I want to grab is the older machine, an old, I say old, current model. This is our GKS 18 VLV-68 C. So this is our uh, bi-turbo um, 190 mil circular saw. Yep. Uh, we've, got, we've got a couple of models, we've got two different models in the range. Yep. We've got this one and we've got the 68GC. This is the C, so it's non-guide rail enabled, um, and it's just connected, it doesn't have the HMI and other features, it doesn't have the quick release. But it's, a, it's an excellent rip saw, right? It's just pure power, yep. running 190mm uh, disc, uh, plenty of power, uh, and plenty of runtime, etc., etc., which is what you'd expect from an 18 volt bi turbo machine. So what can we do on top of this? Well, how about... I bring out this model and show you how about if we gave, gave you a left-hand bias tool. Hmm. So you see, left-hand bias, what's that about, eh? Um, we got a bit of criticism because of the, um, the right-hand bias one. Obviously, people, some people like using a right-hand bias machine. Some people like using a left-hand bias machine. Um, it's not to do with which hand, um, which hand you'd use. It's just how you feel comfortable using it. Um, Americans tend to use a right-hand bias machines, whereas here in the UK or in Europe, they tend, we, we tend to prefer a left-hand bias machine. Um, to, to be honest, you can use either either way. They're perfectly comfortable to use either way. Um, however, we've been missing this in the market. Um, 
so we've decided to develop a left-hand bias version of one of the most, or if not the most successful circular saw we currently have in the range. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't just swap the di we didn't just swap the size of the side of the motor. We've made a few additional changes to it. The mm. name is slightly different uh, because it's a 70, which means it's got a 70 mil cutting depth. Um, it's, this one is actually not connected either. Um, we, we didn't think that it's necessary to have that functionality for this machine because mm. essentially you could argue that we probably didn't need the connected feature on the 68C because you're mm. just going to want to run this tool at full beans and yep. you're just going to you're going to be using it for rip cutting or cutting de uh, cutting material <coughs> just down to length mm. and you don't really need any of the features that the, the more expensive model has. Mm. So what we've got here is a, a 70 mil. Um, it has, it's still running the same uh, bi-turbo brushless motor. So again, this machine mm. really benefits from running either the 5.58 or the 12 amp hour battery because they're the ones that deliver the maximum amount of power to run this properly. I've seen a lot of guys running the, just a normal pro core battery, uh, sorry, a, a normal cool pack battery on our Cirque saws and having a great time. Mm. But you're really missing out, trust me. These machines, these are energy intensive machines. These really, really benefit from using the Procore batteries. Um, and I would even argue that the 12 amp hours are ideal because yeah. you know, they're quite energy intensive. So, uh, by Turbo Brushless Machine, best on Procore. Uh, discs, 190 mil. This one's running a Blue Expert disc. Yep. Uh, I think. It comes as standard with a standard for metal, which I think. Uh, no, got. standard for wood, yeah. Standard for wood, sorry, standard for wood. Yeah, typically, it'll come with uh, one of these discs. Uh, th these blades on it, yep. Uh, but we change it out to the expert one because uh, that's you get a lot of extra performance from running a, an expert blade. So typically, that's what we're going to do. So uh, one hundred ninety mil uh, disc disc size, and it's yep. got a, the bore of th uh, thirty millimeters. Yep. Uh, it's got a bevel capacity, and you can adjust the bevel here at the front um, for fifty degrees. Mm -hmm. so I think it might even be a little bit more than some of the other models, I think. Uh, and it's got a cutting depth of uh, 70 mil up at 90, uh, and then um, 44 millimeters at 45, oh, right. and then all the way up to 50 millimeters, you're down to uh, 44 millimeters, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, weight wise, it's about four kilos, but it's, mm. it's not a big deal. Typically, this is something you'd be using on on material anyway, it's not a problem. Yep. Um, and the only real thing is, only real significant difference is uh, we've added, or we give you the option yep. of having a, uh, a, raft, a, a hook. raft hook or a ladder yeah. hook. Wouldn't recommend it for your belt, no. necessarily. No, uh, what, what I would think is one, one of the main advantages for me, and I know it's a small thing, but a lot of people out there who use a circular saw on a regular basis um, have been sorely missing this for quite some time. But the additional um, yes. Click and clean attachment for here, so you can you can use it as a as a as a push fit attachment. So you just push your your rubber cone into into the uh, push fit adapter there, or pull it out and give it a twist to one side, and you've got click and clean in there as well. Now, um, before we've produced these with just a straight push fit adapter, you can see on the older one here, on the original. Okay. But even the new 57-2. Two. Two. Has this as well. Although the videos that we've sent out already were using a marketing sample that didn't have it, mm -hmm. all of the new products yep. coming out will have this click and clean attachment in here. Now, and although it seems like a really small thing, um, when you're cutting large sheet material and you're trailing a, a hose behind you, mm -hmm. it doesn't take much for that hose to get caught on the edge of the material and pull it clean of the machine. Mm -hmm. And then you've got sawdust all over the place because yeah. invariably you'll lose what's in the pipe as well as. Now I would argue, I would argue that that was some of the feedback that we had. I think I remember people asking us mm. this question. I don't know if it was on the streams or it was through our training sessions. People did ask, "Why do you not have click and clean on your circular saws?" Mm. And then we decided, "Yeah, why should, why don't, why don't we, why should mm. we not, why should we, why should we not just get click and clean stuck on the machines, sorted?" Mm. So that could be an example yeah. of the feedback from you guys coming to us and saying, "Why don't you make the simple change?" Yeah. yeah. That was it. I mean, this, this was implemented just between when we got the marketing sample mm -hmm. and when the product came out. So it, was, it may have been a last sort of last minute change, but it's, it's been carried hey, out. And I'm, the I'm going to take credit. Well, I think we should take, take credit, credit on the yeah. professional live UK that we got some feedback from our users. We all agreed and we make the change and that's, yeah. that's how it should be. But that is, an, that is a, a minor adjustment, minor change, which hopefully, I say hopefully, which I'm very, very confident, is mm -hmm. going to roll out to all new models and maybe even some of the uh, existing models might get a retrofit. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I've fallen victim to that particular scenario more than a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Shoes full of sawdust, um, having to clean up afterwards. But yeah, no, yeah. game changing. And when it comes to just just a simple thing like that. All right. So um, 
I mean, it's it's similar controls to the pre uh, the, the, the GKS 18VS68C. Um, all the all the controls are on the base plate, depth adjustment, bevel, auxiliary side handle. It's comfortable, safety switch. It's all the things you would expect to have on your circular saw. The only difference here is now you've got left hand bias if that's your preference. So let's move on because uh, mm. running a little over. Thank God, it's been a it's been a busy one. It has been a busy I one. I didn't think we were going to come back on our first day in the new year mm. and we'll do, a, we'll do a, a, over an hour on our live stream, but <laughs> you see we've been, got all these tools stored up. So Dan, what's the next one? Well, I'm quite excited about this one. I love a bit of sanding me. So <laughs> this is the GSS 18V-13. Now we've, um, we've previously had the GD, sorry, GS, uh, G, the GEX, that's it, the mm -hmm. GEX 18V-13. Uh, our um, a dual action sander. Um, similar design to this, however this is a sheet sander. So you can see the design similarities with the uh, with the GDX. Do you oh. know GDX? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm, yeah. my, my, my brain's given up. <laughs> yeah. you, you've seen we've had the new the new GEX, uh, the, uh, it's the 12 and the 18 V-25. Yes. Um, with the new, I say, I say new, it's the, the, the air tool inspired design. Yeah. Right, and that has been a really great thing for us. So everyone has had loads of excellent feedback because um, if you haven't had a chance to have hands on, honestly, mm. it's such a much more comfortable working experience compared to um, yeah. other machines out there in the market, including some of our own. Such a low vibration as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, nice, small small body allows okay. you to, to get into awkward That's situations. Right. But um, the, um, the DA version, really well received in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, again, we've got the 18 volt version, um, and the 12 volt version of, of the um, GDX, not GDX, I've done it again. GEX. GEX. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to lie down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, the main advantage is, look, yeah. when we brought out the new GEXs, mm. we moved from brush to brushless, we wanted to do the same thing here. That's yeah. all it is, isn't it? But there's also a 12 volt version of this coming as well. Yeah, we just don't have a we, we just, just don't have, have a sample to hand. But just mm. like the uh, the Gex, we had a, we've got 12 volt and 18 volt. Really, yeah. the the specs between the 12 volt and the 18 volt are, are basically the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the only difference is you'll get reduced runtime just because you're moving from eight, 12 to 18, you get more runtime. Yeah, it? yeah, that's it. So um, the main advantage here is like, look, you've got a machine with a no load speed of 6,000 to 10,000 RPM. Uh, when it comes to the, the stroke rate, that's 12,000 to uh, 20,000, I think. Yep. Yeah, 20,000 oscillations per minute. Mm -hmm. uh, the orbit diameter is about 1.6 millimeters. Uh, and then the difference here is you've got your three different plates. So that yep. determines what kind of sand so sanding sheets you're going to be working currently with. Currently, we've got the delta plate fitted, which is just there. So a bit used, but that's our delta plate there. Yeah, we're a training center. We use all our tools. Yep, you've got a third sheet plate just here. So again, um, Perfect for third sheet paper. We do this all pre-cut anyway for yeah. these ones. Um, and it will come fitted as standard in the box with a quarter sheet um, base here. It's interesting to note that this base not only has the hook and loop attachment on the bottom, but on the side here you've also got the clamps. So if you wanted to buy just uh, paper off, off on the roll, mm -hmm. Um, cut it 10 mil longer each end and just hook it under the clamps here so you can use it either way with, uh, with hook and loop or just standard paper. Um, and the advantage of that as well is it also comes with a plate here. There you go. So this is something that you tend to sort of screw down to your bench top um, and you can, it allows you to, to punch the dust extraction holes into the base when you actually uh, put the paper on there. So that's your dust extraction is going to work perfectly. That's if you're saving money, right? If you're going that's to shoot it, shoot. yeah. 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 So, um, it really depends how quickly you're getting through the sandpaper yes. material. Yeah. So people would obviously say, oh, it's probably a really difficult, you have to buy all the bits separately. No, mm. no. we don't bother with that. Just like we had with the GEX uh, 18 volt mm. um, and, and the 12 volt, that we, we sell it as a um, we sell it as a set with all the different plates. So you get it as, a, as bare only in a carton. Um, oh, sorry, no, bare only uh, in an L box, sorry, uh, and you get all the, all the bits that we've just shown you there. Yep. So you don't have to worry about finding all the different bits, it's all set out. Mm. You can see on here it's dead easy to change, literally there's just four Torx bolts there. T in fact, T20s, isn't it? Yeah, in fact, I've got an Allen uh, Torx key that was here. No, it's at the end of the shelf, I think. Is it? No, no. It's a t as, as Danny said, it's, a, it's just a Torx 20. You've got your four little Torx. All you need to do is remove those, swap over the plate, 
tighten them down. You don't have to put, use a lot of pressure, and then you're away to go again. Yes. Uh, one thing that we mentioned with the Gex is, is the dust bag. Um, surprisingly, now we're, we're one of the last, both of us together, one of the last people to suggest using dust bags. We'd rather always have active dust extraction on the machine. However, we've been very surprised with how, how efficient mm. this is. Yes, the, the flow through of this particular bag for air, absolutely perfect. The machine as well also utilises the radial fan underneath to lift the material away from the, the sanded surface, mm. so fills the bag really quite, quite quickly, in exactly. actual fact. Um, the other advantage of this being so well sealed and have such good vacuum as well is when you plug the extractor onto it, you, li you can literally stick the sander to the wall. Um, mm. the, it's so well sealed in there, um, you don't get any loss of suction. Oh, it's a bit clearly used, but... Yep. <laughs> All you do, it's a simple friction fit on there. You can just pop on the normal. Yeah, just the push fit adapter that comes yeah. fitted to the vac to the extractors when you actually get them. Yeah, so uh, you've got your choices there, but if you want to use it straight out of the box without a dust extractor, uh, in limited use, with good PPE, not a problem. That's it. I mean, the bag's easy to clean as well. You can turn it inside out. You can run a tap through it, let it dry out. You're good to go again. Yeah, cool. Uh, I think, and again, I think we've, we have talked about this tool in previous live streams, but now, as I said, this tool is now officially live. You can buy this out in the market as of the beginning of the year. Mm. Now, we're running a little late, so we've got, I think, maybe one more tool. Lawrence, unfortunately, has, has had to run because it's past five o'clock. So we're going to speed along quickly and finish with, I think, the next tool, which is our, one of our new jigsaws. So yes. I think I've got it in my side. Here we go. So we have got the GST 18V-125B. Yep. Um, Long-awaited replacement for our uh, GST 18 VLI. Yes, exactly. Something that we had on the market for quite some time. A very well-respected machine. Um, in fact, I quite often pick it up, knowing full well that this is right next to it. I still pick up the older one. Yeah, but when we discussed the launches of the, the new jigsaws, the, mm. the GST uh, 18V-155, we did tease this machine as well. So what we've yep. got now is just like we've got with uh, many products that we launched last year, where we've updated or we've uh, brought out a new model that is now a brushless version. It's the same thing for our jigsaws. Mm. Um, when we had with the, um, the 18 VLI, the GST 18 VLI, um, which was a brush machine, uh, now we've got two different brushless machines. Yeah. 155, 125. So this is probably the nearest to a direct, re direct replacement, as you say. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the product, uh, it's 18 volt. Mm. You're looking at a max cutting depth of 125 millimeters at 90 degrees. Uh, it will do aluminium, it will do steel. Uh, do 20 mil in aluminium, 10 mil in steel. Yep. Uh, the stroke length on this is 26 millimeters uh, with a no load speed of uh, 0 to 3500 uh, strokes per minute. Strokes per minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so trying to remember <laughs> what it is. The, it's, hey, it's a new year, I'm trying to get back into, mm. get back into it. Uh, it has, um, like, um, so like many of our machines, it has a orbital or pendulum function. So that's really good if you want to rip cut through material quicker. Yep. Finish is less important. You want to work through it. Um, it also has an LED light. And new to this machine, as well as the previous uh, the 155, the other new machine, mm -hmm. is we've got this button here for the blower function on and off. So that's mm -hmm. off and on. And here's your one, or zero, well, it's te technically it's a four stage pendulum. Yeah. Zero, one, two. So that's new to us as well, the blower function. So we've yeah. got that on all the new models coming out. Big, uh, big advantage on this machine as well is the uh, the SDS attachment. Although it's very similarly op operated, um, on the old VLI machine you'd have to reach in there to operate the lever. This has got an external lever, so your your fingers are further away from the blade. So. I, ne I neglected to bring a T-shank blade. That's my my mistake. Mm. But it's it's as simple as opening the lever here. Okay. Pop in your accessory and you let go. It's very similar to how um, the GSA system works. We've got yes. the GS GSA, so it's a recip saw. Uh, the 18, the GSA 18 V dash uh, 32. 32 and the uh, 64 is the same as well. Yeah. So we have a, mm. you, you have a, a hook on the outside which opens up the, the mechanism. You put your blade in. Make sure you line it up with the roller. Yeah. And then away you go. Really Easy. Yeah. Um, the difference between this model and the one that's already the previously launched, the 155, the new GST 18 V-155, is the fact that now you've, uh, because it's um, a smaller machine, um, you've got the ability to, or not a smaller machine, mm. because of the base plate design, you can bevel this. Yes. With the 155, we decided that that's more of a... That's it's a, more of a rough cutting sort of pro material processing or construction tool. That's right. We Whereas didn't need to bevel on that. But yeah, this, this is more sort of detailed work. So. Mm -hmm. But you still uh, have the redesigned base plate, which helped optimise the dust extraction through the base plate itself. So if I can take the 
Uh, I'll have to take this plate off as well, but you'll see that the dust extraction actually goes through the base plate and into uh, an external port here. So we have, normally you have the dust extraction port at the back here, mm. and that has a left and right hinge, so you yeah. can have it however you like. But we've also, as I said, we've also improved the dust extraction on this model to go through the base plate, mm. and it's far more improved on the, the previous model. That's it. Yeah. Um, one's also slight change on this machine compared to uh, the previous machine. When it came to the barrel grip uh, jigsaws that we've had, they've always had a speed controller. When it comes to the D handle, especially the old machine, we just had a variable speed trigger. Yeah. However, in this particular model, we've given you both options. This still has a variable speed trigger. Uh, it's a battery. Just uh, make sure I don't deafen anyone. But in addition, you can now limit the amount of speed uh, the maximum amount of speed with a speed wheel on the back here. Yeah. So you can set it to three. So no, no matter how much you pull the trigger, it mm. tops it off at the rough, but whatever yeah. speed if, value that is. If you're really doing a fine cut, it allows you to, to basically limit it. Pull the trigger as hard as you like, it's not going to make any difference to the, the speed. Yeah. Let's just, just stay pegged out wherever you've set the dial. Yeah. That's a nice additional feature. It wasn't mm. necessary, but it's a really good benefit for you yeah. users out there that can make use of it. Okay, so a uh, new jigsaw. Plenty of new products, uh, what else have we got? I think, I think that really covers uh, all the new products that we've launched in T1 as mm -hmm. of J January 4th. <laughs> yep. um, obviously, we're always bringing out new products to the market. When it comes to uh, new launches, I'm definitely gonna be, we're definitely going to be doing a teaser stream looking at the, the next products that are going to come out in what we call T2. May onwards, I think yeah. that's going to be. Had to count that one. <laughs> Can't remember what, what, what month we're in the year. So just before May, I reckon, hopefully what we'll do, maybe in April, what we'll do. Yeah, maybe in April, we'll, we'll do a, a stream where we will talk about some of the products coming out. Yeah, May I think onwards. that's a good idea. Yeah. So uh, any more questions, Lizzie, before we finish? Because it's probably been a bit of a, probably about 20 minutes since we had our last question session. We do indeed. Cal Vaughan, why aren't the hoodies and beanies available for purchase? The hoodies and beanies, are you talking about the ones that we tend to sport about? Um, it's a good point, actually. Yeah, good point. It is a good point. Um, the best way to get hold of them, if you wanted to, would be to pop along to an event. And we can't guarantee that we're going to have them. Yeah. Um, but you can always drop us a line beforehand and we can tell you what events yeah. we're going to be at and potentially have them with That's us. That's right. So. We don't sell them currently, so no. why don't you get them for free? Just come. Just come. Yeah. The only price is you have to talk to us. Okay. What we might be thinking of doing is we might be doing some live stream merch. So maybe that yes. might be a way around it. Yep. Let us know. If there, is mm. any, if, there, if there is anything you're wanting to buy that's Bosch branded, uh, if we're not selling it, maybe we can sell it as official Bosch live stream merch. So pop it in the chat. Any other questions, Lizzie? Then a couple of questions about the new GKS um, 18V572. Will it be coming in a left-handed version? And then also mm. um, if you have the product number for the rafter hook. Ah, um, I don't have the part number for the rough hook off the top of my head, but I can, we can easily put that in the chat because, um, as we said, that's an optional accessory. Yep. It doesn't come; it doesn't come with that. So yes, you have to buy it as an optional accessory. Um, so far as the left-hand version um, of the other machine, um, is there? Yeah. Actually, you surprised me then because I didn't. Uh, I, <laughs> that's uh, not the answer that I was going to uh, get. My understanding is there is plans to have that in left hand. It does make sense considering yeah. that. It's such a it's such a good machine. Exactly. Uh, I can't remember um, I can't remember too much details. Again, if if I can disclose that, I'll go away and look that up. But I'm pretty sure that there are plans to bring it out. I just don't know whether or not it's going to be sooner rather than later. It makes sense to round out the range with with the option of both sides. Yeah. So you've got the bi turbo yeah. left-handed bias, and then you have a normal 18 volt. So you're not limited mm. to yeah. bi turbo only if you like that preference. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a rear handle circular saw similar in design to the worm drive coming in the future? So worm drives, that's mm. uh, very popular in America. I've had many questions over my many years here at Bosch talking about worm drives. Mm. Um, We've got one of the original worm drive machines actually in the cage out in our warehouse. Yeah. Um, but so far as... Um, yeah, actually, you've been to Germany more recently than me, so uh, yeah. have you well, heard anything about them? Or? Um, there's been lots of discussions between, my, uh, between ourselves, uh, the, the global training community, as well as the, talking to our the product managers essentially in Germany. Uh, worm drives are not just unique, uh, a request unique here in, in the UK. Mm. There are many other countries that also like the benefit of it. Uh, I can't, like Lawrence always says, we haven't got any information on any products being developed yet, mm. but I do know that that discussion is a constant discussion that we have essentially about whether or not mm. uh, we should have a Bosch worm drive equivalent. Yeah. So to, be, to be fair, we have, we have training quite well, very regularly mm. um, here, either over in Germany or 
via via Teams meetings, that sort of thing. So as soon as we hear anything and we're able to to impart that information to you, on the live streams is going to where you're going to find it. Yeah, certainly. And then a couple of similar ones. Can you buy the click adapter for these saws to replace the push fit? I've just replaced my saw and it has the push fit model. And then is there a way to add the click and clean adapter to the plunger saw? I'm happy to look into that. Um, so far as the, put the click and clean adapter, um, it is available on some machines, but not all of them. But if you can send me through the details, I'll quite happily look it up. For we'll you. find out. It's whether yeah. or not it's available as, a, as an accessory because mm. fitting it wouldn't be difficult. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that for the, the one for the new machine that's just come out will fit the older machines. Mm. If the fitting is the same, it goes into the same 360 degree nozzle. Um, however, for some of the older machines, I'm not so yeah. sure, but I'm quite happy to have a look for yeah, you. Yeah, let's look at that. That'll be interesting to know. Mm. And then one from Lewis. Are there M480 sets for the GSS 18V to suit the Delta and long plates? Um, Thank you. We're the, the one of the. There you go. There's a Delta one in uh, M480. Um, it is available in all of the sizes that the, um, the the GSS offers. So you can get it in quarter sheet, half sheet, and the Delta. So, yeah, all available. No problem. And then another one about merch. A couple of people saying about T-shirts. Um, Stuart's T-shirts are falling apart. Oh, okay. There we go. So decided. We've been we've been talking about it over Christmas whether or not we wanted to have some merch for the live stream. I think it's official now. You guys have asked for it, so that means we can tell the people, pe the people, the people that hold our purse strings will say it's clearly well, a market. There's a demand for it. That's obviously, right. So. I think you guys want T-shirts with our faces on. I think is the, the ideal. I suggested merch. that last time, but it was that was. I got uh, shot down. It was frowned upon. Yeah, we got shot down. <laughs> Apparently, if you tell us otherwise, if you want merch with our faces on, on top of that, yeah, and just, just make sure you put that in the chat, yeah. and that means I'll be happy. Well, that's next year's uh, Christmas <laughs> shopping done. That's, that's my right. family that's done. That's right, exactly. Um, yeah, we'll get on that. We'll definitely uh, work some things out. We'll see what we can get done for the next couple of, maybe in the next couple of live streams, see if we can get some stuff out there for you. Yeah. At the very least, I think we should be doing some competitions. Yes, I think so. Yeah. There's plenty more we can do in the live streams. It's just, uh, yeah. if you've got any ideas or uh, any information, yeah, pop it down in the chat. And we'll uh, we'll uh, consider pretty much anything to be fair true true right so it's <laughs> well past it's well past five we're really really happy that you guys have decided to join us uh, so early in the year mm. uh, i wasn't expecting to work so hard for my first day back i was hoping to have a nice easy day but you guys have kept myself danny and lawrence busy for mm. nearly an hour and a half now that's really so yeah. thank you very much we're getting waves from the team behind apparently yeah. they want recognition as well for coming but we know that they were <laughs> in yesterday anyway so it's not their first day back to be honest so um Again, mm. thank you very much from all ourselves, obviously Lizzie, mm. Nat and, and Rob behind the desk there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm, that's right. Yeah, we'll it's done. So um, we'll see you again in two weeks. Yep. See ya. Take care. Bye bye.